So let's stay focused on those Manhattan prices for condos and co-ops. So, uh, there's a, quite a quite a variation here. I mean, it's almost a 40 or 50 percent uh, premium going from a co-op to a condo. What's the people hear about this all the time? What what are the basic differences between a condo condominium and a, and a co-op cooperative? Well, um, the difference is a condominium um, is kind of a universally um, uh, acknowledged form of ownership where you buy an apartment and you share um, uh, everything else with the rest of the building. You share the roof, you share the doorman, the elevator, the upkeep on the rest of the apartment building is uh, known as a maintenance charge that comes monthly. And that is something that most everybody is familiar with is buying a condo and a co-op, which is pretty much a, a entirely a, a Manhattan or New York City experience. There are a few other cities that have it, but it's predominantly known um, in New York City. That is a fractional ownership in a corporation. So when you buy a co-op, let's just say it's a one bedroom co-op, $750,000, you are buying shares in a corporation. Um, when that corporation was established, maybe it was in the 80s, 70s, whenever uh, the paperwork was um, committed uh, to paper, um, they put down 1,000 total shares, 2,000 sh total shares, whatever it is, you're buying those 111 shares which represent that apartment. And the difference being practically, uh, it's not really, you know, it's not like you're living in a, a different kind of an experience. It's still an apartment. It still has a kitchen and a bathroom and things like that. But the difference being is that when you go to purchase that kind of, uh, uh, of an apartment, you have to pay more down payment, um, 20 to 25 percent at a minimum, whereas condos, you can get 20 percent down. And uh, beyond that, you also have a board interview, which you don't have in a condominium. So it's a little trickier, a little more difficult to get in. But the payoff is, as you can see, the prices are much less. What would you say the difference is in people that prefer a co-op over a condo, would you say? I mean, are there, there must be preferences where people are saying, well, you know, I like that idea of, of a board interview or, you know, having more of a neighborhood feel to it, which you do get in a co-op. Yeah, and if you're going to be in the city for four, five, six years, if you're here for the long term, you're not going to be moving a lot then you know some of the friction that comes when you sell a co-op is you not just have to find somebody that has the money to buy it you also have to find somebody that's going to be qualified to pass your your uh, your building's board so if you don't uh, mind um you know the selling process taking a little bit longer possibly then um you should explore buying a co-op as long as you know you understand what the requirements are they do dig a little bit deeper in terms of you know your financial picture, your social picture, things like that. But again, if you're if you're getting a 20, 25, 30% discount on the purchase price and you're gonna be there for a while, for many people it's worth it. You know, you were saying about the co-ops having a lot larger down payment than the condominiums. What other um, strings come attached with say ownership of a, of a co-op as opposed to a condo? I mean, a condo sounds like the more, the, the free form kind of form of ownership. But uh, with the co-op, uh, there are sublet restrictions, aren't there, for instance? There are. I'm glad you mentioned that. I uh, forgot to talk about that. So in a condo, you can buy it on a Monday and rent it out on a Tuesday. If it is a co-op, frequently you have to live in the apartment for at least two years before you can rent it out. And sometimes you can only rent it out for maybe a year or two. And in some very strict buildings, they don't allow any subletting. In other buildings, it's a hybrid model, meaning that you can sublet it, but you have to be, you know, you have to have moved jobs or has to be a traumatic life experience. Um, and generally speaking, most co-ops look down on renting. They would prefer that the people that live in the apartments be shareholders. Yeah, I do know that that can be a sticking point for some people, especially if they're, you know, they lead a much more flexible lifestyle where they're not going to be in New York City all the time and they would like to make best use out of, say, they're not here for six months out of the year. I, I, I think it's reasonable to say that probably the people watching this, 80, 90% of you are probably going to be buying a condominium and the majority of this discussion is probably going to be, you know, catered to those discussions which is kind of the easiest and the simplest form of ownership in New York City. Yes, yeah, so let's talk about one other aspect of a condominium. You were mentioning the lower down payments for a condominium. I've seen, you know, down payments in some buildings where they allow 10% down payment. Now, that could be of interest to people that can get a little bit more leverage for their for their money, wouldn't you think? Sure, it all comes down to what the bank's risk, risk level are. So if Chase will give you a mortgage with 10% down because you have a special relationship with them, God bless. The condominiums don't have any right to put any restrictions on the financing, generally speaking. And as long as you, you know, you can cut, show up at closing with the money, that's really all they care about. What besides the down payment uh, is required when you're looking at uh, an apartment purchase? For instance, are there income 
requirements that they, you know, these boards look at. Let's nice go bit. to the slides again, Robert. Okay, so our second, our second slide, sticking the tongue here. Um, you'll see um, these are just general uh, guidelines based on a million, million and a half, two and a half, four million dollar purchase prices. And as you can see, we've pegged the monthlies, which uh, in, a, in a condominium would be your maintenance charge or, or your, your common charges at about $2.20 uh, a square foot. That's about where things stand right now for an average condo purchase. So you will need to pay, of course, after you buy the apartment, uh, if you're financing, you'll pay that monthly common charge of 1000 and. Uh, 51 uh, is that oh, okay so your monthlies those I think those numbers are off a little yeah, bit yeah I just know, I just know we have a few extra zeros there it's actually um, a thousand a thousand fifty one dollars so they're a thousand and fifty one dollars that combined with your four thousand eight hundred and fourteen dollar um, mortgage payments are going to be about five thousand dollars or so um, now your um, your total income let's just get this let's move the screen here a little bit Robert if we can so your total um, your total income needed should be no more than 28% um, your total housing payment should be no more than 28% of your income so um, uh, actually I think we're gonna have to redo the slide so let's just get out of that slide for yeah. a second we'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it for a second okay. uh, Let's get out of that. So um, we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to the people that created the slide, which is us. <laughs> so your your um, your what is, and by the way, when we send you the um, uh, the attachment, we'll make sure that the slide is correct. Um, when you're buying an apartment in, in, in Manhattan, um, so your your total carrying charges, your monthly charges, which should be common charges in the con in the condo or maintenance charges in the co-op. Those numbers combined with your monthly mortgage payment can equal no more than 28% um, uh, of your income. And those are pretty hard and fast guidelines. Same thing as if you're, you're getting a bank loan, that's what they would want to see. And that's um, what a co-op co would want to see as well. It makes a lot of sense, right? Because if, you know, the, if that number is higher than whatever that cutoff is, 28, 32%, it starts to really, uh, you know, Get the banks nervous as to the risk profile on the property. So That's right. Trying to minimize their risk. That's right. When would you say is a good time to buy? Is there a good time to buy an apartment in New York? Um, a good time to buy is whenever you know you've got your down payment saved, and when you feel pretty good about your uh, credit. You know, generally speaking, it should be over seven hundred, and you have some stability in your life. Of course, you don't want to be going into a purchase if things are going to be changing in the next two or three months. So, when you're when you have the ability to make some long-term plans got some cash your credit is pretty good that's the time to start looking 